Everyone get out! Hello tankers and tankettes, welcome to some live gameplay and I'm a man on a mission because there are some missions going on at the moment which ultimately, hopefully, will get me a premium tank. There are actually two going and I'm only going for one of them because one involves playing a lot of light tanks to ultimately get the KV-220 which I've already got. If you already have it of course you can still do the mission, get some free gold but I don't fancy playing that many light tanks to be honest. The other involves playing medium tanks to get the Chinese tier 7 premium light the Type 62 and I don't have that and it's been a while since you've been able to buy that so that's the one I'm going for. Mostly because I can stand to play that many mediums but it's still outside of my comfort zone I will say that I've only got two tier 8 mediums um, I've got some tier 7s, some tier 6s, and it's tier 6 upwards. Obviously the the higher the tier then the better you're going to do it, you know, the, the, the less battles you'll have to play in terms of collecting damage and collecting XP. But um, because I'm not that good at mediums generally, because I normally only play them in kind of small doses, having to sit down and play half my tank battles in a day in medium tanks is definitely outside my normal comfort zone. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see if at the end of the uh, the the 25 uh, mission days if I'm actually any more comfortable in my pre in my medium tanks or if I'm still just as you know struggling just as much as I usually do to have an impact in the same way that I would in other kinds of vehicle now this is actually my second attempt at recording this because um, yeah I had a bit of a snafu with Bandicam previously I sat down and recorded nearly half an hour half an hour's worth of stuff and it was fine and you know and then I realized that actually not only was it dropping frames because of a setting that I hadn't noticed was there but also there was another setting that meant that my sound was all being mixed into one track so I was really quiet against the background which was kind of annoying because I had at least one decent match in that lot and as you can see I've already got my Centurion and Panther 2 dailies and that that's what I'm going to be playing today so yeah I, I've rectified that and now I've got to go and you know I've, I'm, I've got to sit down and do it all over again but that doesn't matter because it's all grist to the mill it's all more XP towards the mission and I've not done that much so far today as you can see I'm not even halfway on the hit points requirement which always goes quicker you know the uh, quickest the you know, damage to enemy tanks basically that usually takes the longest for me is actually getting the kills and then base XP you just keep bashing away at it basically so yeah we'll start off with the Centurion and see how that goes and hopefully Vandercam will behave itself it's just the it's a couple of settings that don't matter when I'm recording replays but when I'm recording live like this and I'm also recording the sound through Vandercam um, it, it does start to matter because uh, otherwise it can, you know, it, it was doing things like uh, dropping frames and then obviously because it's recording the sound in Bandicam as well, it chops off half a sentence and that kind of thing and I was inaudible for bits of it against the, the game sound and it's just having having reinstalled Windows recently and then having not recorded any live gameplay since that point, it's I totally forgot about those settings being there. So this is going to be fun. Um, my battles up till now have been okay matchmaking. I've only been top tier once, but um, they were, you know, otherwise tier nine battles with only a couple of tier nines. But this is, this is going to be harder. And one of the things, um, I, I mean, it feels like I'm repeating myself. Of course, you you didn't get to hear any of the stuff I was saying before, so I'm going to try and remember some of the things I was saying. But it feels like uh, one of the reasons why mediums are outside my comfort zone is that it's it's less my playstyle, it requires better reflexes and while World of Tanks is a game that you know unlike say something like Call of Duty or, or uh, Battlefield or whatever where um, having good reflexes is absolutely essential to doing well in the game you know it still matters in World of Tanks it just matters a bit less but for some kinds of tank especially the high tier mediums where it's all about kind of you know fast aggressive playstyle ideally you know depending on the medium of course not maybe so much the centurion but um, good reflexes really helps because you gotta pop out and get your shot off and hit the other guy all before he can hit you hopefully and I don't do that so well I have to sit and aim a bit usually to make my shots count so that's why it doesn't usually best suit me. and also I mean Circon insists that it doesn't help that I also purely just use the server reticle but 
using the client side reticle, I mean, I've tried that in the past and it's just so frustrating having, I mean, you see that there, it doesn't move smoothly, no, but I don't really notice that just because that, that's how I've always played, you know, I've always used that. And having shots fly off into God knows where, because where you think you're aiming and where the server thinks you're aiming are in different places, well, that's just, you know, very annoying. So this is a bit boring so far. But I don't want to press up. I don't really have the speed to get up to that corner. 40 kilometers an hour, you know, it's not exactly fast. It's all right, but, you know... <laughs> yeah, it's, you don't play uh, the British medium line for fast, nimble, medium tanks. I help. Um, yeah, well, if the T-62A would go... Is he even here? I don't know. He's kind of parked himself against the... No, he is there. And he's blind firing, I guess. Um, yeah, so I don't know. I, I'm not going to do that because I don't have the speed and I would just die. I don't have the armor either. So yeah, I, I struggle to f make the same impact in mediums that I, I would in a heavy tank in in a, a match, you know, given given the whatever matchmaking. And in fact, the Centurion, I, I end up playing more as a sniper than anything else because if I try and do anything else, it doesn't tend to go well. Uh, we're not doing so well in this battle, are we? But, um, yeah, it's, I think it's just the lack of armour combined with the need for kind of better reflexes, better on-the-fly decision-making, whereas heavy tanks you've got a bit more time to work with, you've got a bit more armour to work with, you've got more hit points to work with, you know, it's more my speed as it were. That's one of the things I like about all tanks is it's kind of got something for everyone. This team's getting annihilated, Jesus, okay. And I think if I'd been in a heavy tank, it probably wouldn't have been exactly the same, but I would have been in a different place and maybe making more of a, a difference. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. What are you going to do here that's going to make a difference? I don't know, to be honest, as a, as a, a single, you know, as a, as a lone player. Well, I'm trying to help out this Object 140, but I don't know if my shots would actually... There we go. Wow, well, oh, that was a little bit... PTA, T28 props. Just delaying the inevitable here. It'd be nice to get a bit more damage in. So, yeah, this is um, this is going well. So the Centurion's got an okay turret, but even stuff could still punch through that. Can we hit the PTA? No, it's just about to nail that guy. Yeah. It's, um, uh, yeah, this is a rout. This is absolutely ridiculous. Holy cow. Well, come on then. Well, that Object 140 is sour, but who wouldn't be sour on this team? Honestly, um, yeah, this is... Yay, we got a kill! <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> right, okay. Yeah, um... Yeah, yeah, not going to do well out of that team. Um, <laughs> that's not going to take me far towards my goal for the day. We'll try that in the Centurion again. I mean, I that's one more kill to the list, but that's that's nothing. That's, that's terrible. That whole team was terrible. And, yeah, games like that, in a medium, it's more frustrating because I feel like I can do less. Like, there's less chance to bring it back, less chance to tip the balance. And isn't there? A, I think there's a sports saying that goes something something along the lines of like you know, 30% are a guaranteed win and 30% are a guaranteed loss, and it's the the other 40% that are the you know the the decider kind of thing. And I think the better, the more skills you have as a player, the better player you are, the wider you can make that middle ground, that 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 overlap where you can make a difference. Um, but when I'm you know for me it depends what kind of tank I'm in, and when I'm in a medium tank. That is not necessarily, um, you know, I'm not going to do nearly as well as if I'm in a heavy tank. But on that previous, in that previous match, I, I suspect nothing I could have done in any tank would have made any difference. That was one of the 30% that you're going to lose regardless, as it were. 
So let's hope I uh, get one where I can, you know, do a bit more. And and just to, you know, also to reiterate, as I seem to do in basically every live gameplay video, but, you know, there are people out there watching this one who've never seen one of my live gameplay videos before. The reason I do these is because this is all as it's happening, and with the replays it's all very pre-packaged and it's all very pre-selected, and you're basically getting not necessarily the best of the best, but you're getting the ones that I feel have some value that show something in some way, you know, that they're entertaining or they're silly or whatever. But um, playing it live, it's a bit close to my experience just playing it day to day, you know, the, the battles that I just have, basically, that... that uh, um, oh, some shots in there, maybe? That, um, you know, maybe gives a more accurate reflection of, of how I actually play, or, you know, how I, I do generally. The fact that, you know, I, I can be just at the mercy of RNG as, as anybody else, but, um, it's the, it's the middle ground that's, that's the, you know, different part. Everyone's always going to have some matches where, frankly, whatever you do, it's going to be a loss, and you can't do a blessed thing about it. It's the matches where you can tip it either way that are the you know that that's where player skill becomes the the important factor and some matches are just like you know well it would have been a win if you weren't there regardless you could have just sat afk in a cap in in the in the cap circle and it made absolutely no difference whatsoever so yeah um should we have the kv5 i don't i don't really want to it's not like i've got the armor to be honest I'd almost like to stay here and use my gun to crash all that E25's just decided to YOLO. I was, gonna, I was almost tempted to try and shoot underneath the VK there, but... It's funny, I had a match the other day where I... Uh, it was the... What was it? Muravanka, that was it. And there was a last enemy Ferdy camping in the forest, of course. So I was, uh, we had a T71 who was low health that came streaming up behind. I was trying to shoot the lower front plate of the Ferdy from the front. And my shell went underneath the 30 and actually hit the, the low health T71 and killed him. And it was just pure RNG. It was like, there was a, what can you do about a shot like that? And it was perfectly aimed at the 30's lower front plate and it's dead. The shell went underneath and killed the T71 that was just passing behind him. Well, okay then. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm certain the, uh, the opposite would have happened. That I would have been aimed perfectly at the E25 and instead I would have hit the VK. Because <laughs> reasons. No one wants to shoot that SU. Get a shot here, so I'm not going to get a kill. There we go. And this is looking like it's pretty much, you know, the inverse of the last battle. Like, I, I needn't necessarily be here, and it pretty much would be the same, but hey. If I'm uh, contributing just a bit, then I always want someone else to take a shot at the IS3 so I can get the kill. Well, someone did take a shot, and it didn't matter. I quite like the kill. Oh, some kills. Because kills are the tough one to get. Yeah, I just kind of threw away some health there. Let's not get hit by this high six again, though, shall we? Oh, tiny, so we can. No, IS6, you don't want me. No, that's cheeky. And again, I mean, this is not quite as one sided. The last battle was absolutely ridiculous. Fortunately, one doesn't get many battles like that. It's always kind of, you know, leaves a sour taste in the mouth when one does, but um, you just have to kind of shrug and say, well, okay, it happens, move on to the next one. As someone pointed out in... Uh, was it the IS2 live gameplay video? That, I don't know. I mean, it's kind of a very human thing that, ideally, um, if one could just kind of you know, disconnect yourself from what's happening and really compartmentalise that you would take every battle as an individual thing and you would just ignore everything that's gone before and uh, it just, you know, that you, you would kind of put aside everything that's gone before and all the, the, the teams that you've had before and that you would just try and play at your, your peak every time but of course we're all human so that isn't always the easiest thing to do sometimes you end up having a string of of, of uh, teams where, honestly, you know, it's possible to have teams like the, the previous team, like several in a row, and it's like, what, what can you do about it? And that that gets to be a bit of a drag, and it affects your play, and you start to feel pessimistic, and, well, 
at that point, yeah, it, it's having a negative effect on your uh, your um, subsequent play. But uh, again, it's it's I don't know. It's the ideal is that that wouldn't happen, and it'd be great if you could stop it from happening. But it's it's not always going to be the case because, like I said, it's a very human thing. So yeah, it, it, you know, it'd be the ideal would be just to be very Vulcan about it and just be kind of disconnected and um, just be able to switch yourself off from, you know, totally comp compartmentalize every battle and take every battle in its own uh, for its own merits kind of thing, fight every battle equally. But uh, surprisingly, right, he knows I'm coming. I'm just gonna wait for backup. Souffle is a one shot. Oh, well, he fired his reloads. Actually, I think my reload's better than his. I th think. Yeah. The thing is, he's got more health than me and he knows it. Can I get his trap in time? Not, not in time to stop him coming down, no. Right. Well, I can use his turret traverse against him, though. So that's fine. And I've got backup. So there we go. It's just the T71 left. Now, I it would be nice if we'd keep one on, on the, the cap just to be safe, but uh, yeah. I've actually done... It's weird, this doesn't feel like it's a good battle, but actually for me in a Centurion, this is a good battle. And I was saying, actually, no, this is one where if I'd... I, you know, I did say that, didn't I? I probably wouldn't have made a difference either way. Actually, no, I think it, I did make a difference. That's over 3,000 damage. This is actually a good battle for me in the Centurion. But maybe because I've been busy nattering away, it's kind of like... Yeah... <laughs> It doesn't quite feel like it. So the T seventy one's decided to go hide. He knows somebody else that somebody can actually get back in time to. So yeah, I think in this case we just rather than chase down a T seventy one, quite content to cap. And he has done, you know, he's made seven kills. He's probably done the best of anybody in the enemy team. And this was actually a lot closer than it should have been or could have been. I think largely thanks to that T seventy one on the enemy team. So. Kudos to him for just, um, you know, he he did his best, he fought his hardest. So actually, um, uh, yeah, kudos to that guy. But again, sometimes you do your best and it just makes no difference. So where are you hiding, little T-71? It'd be nice to get another kill, I'll get a bit more damage, but I'm quite happy with Oh, there he is! Ramming speed. He might actually kill me, you know. I might just be giving him a Radley Walters. <laughs> I am. I'm going to give him a Radley Walters. <laughs> well, there you go. The Centurion's not the best for ramming. I just gave that guy a Radley Walters. GG. There you go, 271. My gift to you. I squeezed a bit more damage out of it, though. You know, I'm not going to complain about that. Um, yeah, no, this was actually... This was a good game for me in the Centurion Mark I. A high-caliber medal. I don't have many of those. And a Confederate. So, I, yeah, I definitely take back what I said about oh, I'm probably not going to make a big difference in this match. As it turns out, yeah, I did. <laughs> so, yeah, um, he... I, I, I did. I gifted him a Radley Walters medal. <laughs> but uh, I think he... he, he deserved it after that performance that was uh, his team was considerably worse he had much, much more of a an uphill fight there so yeah um, we won though and that's the that's the important thing and he had absolutely no chance to get back in cap so there we go so yeah this this um, being out my comfort zone and having to play uh, more mediums as well it's not necessarily a bad thing because it's also going to help me grind towards the tier 10 on the British line and and um, that I don't know if you, you may or may not know, but the tier 10 is being replaced with uh, Exeturian Prototype. And the current tier 10, the FV, is possibly going to be... It, it's going to be made tier 8 premium, and it's possibly going to be given for, to those who already have the, the current tier 10 unlocked as a, a free tier 8 premium. And they've only really done that once before, uh, a long time ago, when uh, in, in Wargaming's earlier days with the, the American Heavy line. And a bunch of people got a T-34 for, for free, basically. But of course they were more generous at that point, because they had fewer players and they were trying to you know, attract people to the game more. And That's less of a concern for them these days, but, you know, it might be that um, they, they'll have a, a change of heart and say, actually, no, we will give it away. And Because a, a thing like that, I mean, it doesn't... 
in terms of the monetary hit, it's not going to cost them that much, and it will generate a tremendous amount of goodwill, basically. Uh, and, and probably they'll make money from it in that people will pay to, you know, they'll they'll grind free XP on other tanks. I have exactly 33,000 free XP at the moment, by the way, um, to try and unlock that tier 10 before, um, you know, so they might actually end up making money, I don't know. It's one of those things it's hard to say beforehand. So we've had the Centurion game where that was actually a good game, and yes, I died at the end there. It was maybe a bit silly of me to to uh, to to die at the end there. If I'd had, I had a bit more health, I probably could have gotten that guy. But I I feel he uh, he kind of deserved that Radley Walters, frankly, with the effort he put into that battle. Um, I'm I'm not at all displeased that I died in that one and gave somebody a nice medal. And it was definitely a better battle than the, the first battle. We won't talk about the first battle. That first battle was absolutely, you know, it was what it was. Okay, this is... Um, okay, okay, this is encounter mode. It's fiery salient. And this is actually alright matchmaking. Yeah, this is not too bad at all. No artillery, which is also really, really useful. So I... I'm not quite sure where I want to go on this one. The hill, maybe. I do have optics on this, so that helps a lot. Optics is um, it's a fairly important piece of equipment on mediums. And I've actually started putting it on some of my heavies as well. Like, for instance, the mouse. I've actually, as an experiment, I swapped the super heavy spool liner for coated optics. And... Honestly, I'm not I'm not regretting it so far. I'm not noticing the lack of having the super heavy spool liner, especially. I might actually need to I might actually need to go in the middle on this map. This map is a lot easier when you've got platoon because you can you can cover the strategic areas a lot more more successfully. You can say, right, someone's going to be in the middle, and then you, you know that someone you trust is going to be on the hill as well. Whereas these guys. I just, uh, yes. So I'm, I'm going to try and be in the middle, but this isn't going to work unless there are actually people on the hill. And it's also one of those maps where you need these strategic positions, but if there's artillery in the game, then it just kind of breaks the map because you can't, you, if you get focused, you know, artillery knows that you need these positions, so artillery focuses, and then it just becomes a, a, a matter of well, who has the, the better artillery player, who, who has the more lucky artillery player in terms of um, actually being able to take out the, the person in the middle first. So, yeah, so they've got one person in cap, probably the T-72... No, not the T-71, okay. T-43 maybe, T-54. Nobody's going to the hill, this is not good at all. And there's a pattern. So, uh, yeah, like I said, this position only works if somebody's on the hill and we have a bunch of people sitting on the tracks. So GG, maybe. <laughs> Sometimes you can look at the mini-map and just think, okay, yeah, this is this is going to go how it's going to go. If they push down the other flank hard, I mean, I might need to suicide and, you know, into the cap and, like, just decap at the cost of my own life at some point, which is not going to get me much XP or anything, but it might win the match. Sometimes you have to do things like that knowing that you're going to have a terrible result, but if you don't, the match will be a loss. That's the difference between you know, being a team player and being a... We're, we're all kind of selfish players in some way at the end of the day, because it's all about getting damage and the XP, but... Um, sometimes you have to accept that you're not going to have good XP or, or damage, and you have to do something that hurts you uh, hurts your end result, but maybe makes the difference between a win and a loss. Can I? Can I? Not quite sure. Leopard PTA? Ah, uh, PTA's on the hill, that's not good. That pattern will have better gun depression than I do as well. Although, not particularly a better turret. Right, here's the tier 9 pattern. I always get confused. Right, these guys kind of need to do something. They're both full health. Let's see if we can get some shots at the hill. But this is, like, given the state of the hill right now, this is sad. Uh, these guys need to get a shift on. And the two tier 7s sitting at the back are absolutely no use to anyone either. 
So yeah, this is a map where I always prefer to be on a platoon. It's not such a good experience when you're... Because again, in... Uh, did I say this already in this? Uh, probably I said it in the previous recording, that it feels like in mediums I'm much more dependent on the rest of my team. Like, I need the rest of my team to be sufficiently competent. Whereas in heavies I feel like you can more make your own space and um, kind of carve your own path kind of thing. I'm not seeing anything. They're firing and I'm not seeing them, which is kind of annoying. Um, but uh, in mediums it feels like, yeah, I've just got to... I'm more dependent on the team. I'm, I'm, more, I'm less able to rely on my own skill because I'm not that great with mediums. So they don't mesh with my playstyle that well. Which is kind of why, actually, you know, why I'm playing the Panther 2, because the E50 and the E50M are they're kind of like heavy-medium hybrids. And uh, I, I figure, actually, of all the, the, the higher-tier mediums, they might fit my playstyle most. Although, I was going to uh, show you in the garage, but uh, I can just say it anyway. I've actually... I sold the KV-13 and bought the uh, T-43 to finally kind of get started on that, uh, the line that goes up to the, the, the T-54 and those two. Oh, sorry, Pershing. But, um, yeah, this is... Uh, I mean, going to the cap, but it's going to be short-lived because they've got so much on that slope there, and we're not contesting the hill. The other flank is finally getting pushed, though. Oh, on that. Oh, yes. The PTA, um, this E75 is not good. He's just left this, uh, this Jag Tiger to die. If I can hit the PTA, but he's actually quite effectively using the... He's being clever, he's using the Jag Tiger for cover whilst killing the Jag Tiger. Oh, tracked him. Nice, nice strike. If I can kill the PTA, he's a pretty big threat. Oh, I've bounced something. Right, I might take a hit or two, but if we can take out this PTA. Yes, there we go. He's a big threat. Okay, we might actually pull this back. This is, um... They've finally pushed down the other flank. We lost the M103. No, actually, the M103 is still alive. He's come this way. I was looking at the other flank and saying, I don't see the, don't see the M103. But no, the the tier nines are finally kind of starting to shift. That W set's gone in the cap and decapped. And uh, yeah, we we don't have the hill, which is a problem. But oh, that bounced though. Right, don't care so much about the IS because he's about to die. There we go. Just to get that kill, is all. I get the IS as well. I'll wait for him to be lit up rather than just waste a shot blind firing. I think he's there. They have an E-75 on the island, how novel. If our Black Prince would move, that would be quite good. Right. No, they haven't spotted the IS, they don't want to go over for some reason. Oh, the WZ's fairly low health there, that's the thing. Can I shoot the... I've only got his front armour really available. I'm actually, I mean, uh, no, oh, an SC-152. Gonna shoot him. I'm actually almost tempted to go up the hill, because that E-75 is so totally... Like, he's just... It's not ideal terrain for an E-75, but on the other hand, you're in an E-75 and there's no artillery. Um... Or do I? Oh, for goodness sake. I don't know. See, this is... I get indecisive when I play mediums. I don't quite know what to do. And that's where their T-29 is. Wow. He's all the way in the back. Right, they've only got one thing on the hill now, which is the IS-6. Who could potentially be annoying. That T-34 is nearly dead. They... okay, so basically their camping heavies kind of gave this away. They didn't press their advantage on the hill. You know, they had the hill. Or they could have had the hill. But uh, they, they, they did kind of give that away, to be honest. So this is this is more that the enemy team, you know... I've really not done much in this one. I've picked up a kill and a bit of damage, but this is more that the enemy team just kind of, like, gave this away, to be honest. I, th I thought our team's lack of, you know, the fact that we weren't taking the hill, but um, uh, even then it's like, just didn't matter because the enemy team were just like... Oh, I've actually helped Cap, I didn't intend to do that. A bit of final damage. Yeah, we didn't... I, 
I was not paying attention to the fact that, oh yeah, I'm in the cap circle, aren't I? GG. Hooray, I found some loser points. Yay. So, yeah, I gave someone a Radley Walters medal and I found some loser points. So, uh, yeah, damage-wise, I'm actually getting there in terms of filling that bar up. That's always the easiest. Kills is going to take a while. I'll probably be, you know, grinding on and off the rest of the day trying to get the kills. XP is just a matter of keeping at it and hoping I don't get too many teams like that first team from this video because, oh my word, should we take a look at that? So that's two wins. One where I did all right. This was a bit... Uh, it was all right. Not great. Nothing to write home about. Third on the team, but did I really deserve third on the team? Well, we had a bunch of people that did even less, so, you know... <laughs> whatever um but this first team was just that's uh, just yeah <laughs> i don't even know i don't even know fortunately games like that don't happen too often because uh, it wouldn't be world of tanks wouldn't be fun if it did and just occasionally matchmaking puts you in with a bunch of you know it a bunch of teammates where it literally is one versus 29 almost um, and conversely, it, sometimes it puts you in teams where, like I've said, you could just sit AFK in the cap circle and the team would just brothel stomp the enemy team anyway. It happens. So, yeah, two, two out of three wins is not bad for, a medi for, for mediums for me. Uh, one of them I actually did okay, surprisingly, and I surprised myself with that one. It's just one of those games where I'm just kind of driving along and, and thinking, yeah, it's not going so well, it's, it's okay, it's a bit meh, and then, you know, you get to the end of the battle and bam! done over 3,000 damage, and it's actually quite good for me in, a, in the Centurion, and I've, you know, <laughs> I've actually come out top of the team, and, and whatever, so, yeah, uh, I'm not going to complain too much, so th this was alright, this was actually, it's not terrible that I had to re-record this, because this is actually, I've had better games ish, you know, apart from that first one, than my first attempt at recording. So, if you like this uh, video, you can hit the like button below, you can leave any comments below, you can subscribe to my channel, and as always, stay tuned for more.